Mr. Q. Amazing. There it is. Love in the crowd for our Note last remaining local. Note the spelling. Note the spelling of that. I mean, that's a local. The local's not going to mess that up. <laughs> yeah. But we also have a Serral OP sign right next to it, which I tend to agree with. You know, <laughs> he is on the other side of the bracket, of course. A very, very scary gentleman indeed, the five-time champion. Now, Laser is actually also a previous WCS champion. Hellraiser, yet to get a notch on the belt. Let's see how he does here in the top left of Acropolis. This is the Polish Zerg, Mr. Elazer. And in the bottom right, we have our red Protoss player, the hometown hero here from the Ukraine. He is Team Clash's Hellraiser. Nearly. We're getting better almost, at that. Almost, almost. We're getting better. It's my first cast for the day, yeah. so I'm not warmed up yet. Yeah. But, but the build is Alex always delays the second intro by about 20 seconds. For those who don't know, here at the venue, uh, they, we do actually yes. have the uh, Ukrainian casters out right. on the stage. So. Yep, Russian audio out there in the crowd. Uh, Ukrainians and Russians casting for us. Demago is up there as well. Mm, One of my favorite yeah. Zergs from Wings Looking Liberty. very good in that he suit. Is, look he is looking. Spin. Yeah. You know what? If I need anyone assassinated, he's the first person I'll call. <laughs> Laser Santa cast is a little bit loud for him. Ah, so. okay. Can I get a oh. moment? Already have that scout and probe moving out, but okay. no shenanigans well, or anything. You know, the soundproofing is pretty good. It just needs to be bumped up a little bit. Usually the white noise or the pink noise, whatever they use with the noise canceling headsets on the yeah. on the top. It probably needs to have like the the uh, environmental noise raised a bit. Should be fine. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not us. At least no. we know it's yeah. not our fault. What's funny is a laser doesn't even actually know Ukrainian, does he? I think uh, it's just it's probably just annoying him more than anything else. Uh, I mean it's it's similar yeah. to, to Polish. He doesn't he does know okay. a little bit. I remember he said that when Alex 007 had his announcer pack put it in the Starcraft, the laser was like, This is the first announcer pack I'm going to buy. Really? Yes. Okay. I remember seeing that on Twitter back in the day. Well now we know what announcer pack he uses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So see Hellraiser just sitting there, everything getting ready. But again, this is gonna be one of those aggressive series. So this is one of those uh, matches that I look at and I think, okay. Both of these players have already probably mapped out with the map vetoes and everything and said, okay, these are the builds I'm going to do on these particular maps. And it's going to be, you know, trying to mix things up. I'm expecting potential mind games mm. getting involved over here, deception of trying to hide builds and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I did see that Acropolis and New Repugnancy snuck their way into this map pool. I mean, both players actually uh, banned um, Cyber Forest and Thunderbird, I, I think. So the smallest map and the biggest map from memory. That was the, that was the pick bands for this one. So there is actually some very good Cannon Rush maps. Does that mean Turbo Cruise is in the map pool <laughs> now? <laughs> we got this? Uh, I mean, if it gets to game five, I think yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> if, yeah, it'd probably have to be a game <laughs> five pick. It's probably at the back there, but... Um, yeah, I mean, there's a uh, quite a few quite a few good maps for the Cannon Rush strats. We've seen Hellraiser sort of whip out against Serral. Yeah, he definitely has been one who historically, like around the time that Cannon Rushes were still just becoming popular, Hellraiser was one of the first players to just bust those out and say, "Yep, yeah, I can take down some Zerg players with this." So he's got the experience with it. We'll see what he's going to be doing. I don't. I mean, with the the pylon and the low ground and everything, you can actually see it on his screen over there. I don't think he's going for any of those uh, immediate Cannon Rushes or anything, but. No, uh, at least not in game one. Yeah, yeah, not not game one. Um, actually, some of the Hellraiser PVZs I've seen, he actually likes to feel out his opponent first mm -hmm. by just sort of playing very standard and very like you know hitting with the adepts and just seeing you know what how how are you going to play this series against me and just being very vanilla in game one and then saving the more I guess targeted strats or something where he has a very much a, a, a game plan in, set in his mind till later on in the series. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually thinking of his series versus Serral where he was doing exactly that. Game yeah. number one, playing this very, very normal kind of macro style. Small little twists on it and everything, and he does hit at a really perfect timing and actually takes the game off of Serral. But it was game two and game three that he starts mixing things up, getting involved with, for example, the cannon rush, yep. uh, which yep. Didn't work out super well versus Serral, but, you know, some small adjustments could have been made, and I think it would be really, really strong. Yeah, I talked to Hellraiser after that uh, after that series myself, and mm. he was just saying, like, I think that I could have had my Cybercore done a minute early. Yep. Like, the probe went home, when it, or, or rather, you know, the probe had taken out. We need another one up there to be able to... Oh, love for Bomber. That's weird. Oh. He's not even in this, this country, but... I mean, hey, you can be a fan of Bomber wherever you want. It's the great thing about esports. We're all online. Can I just come here and, like, sit in the audience during the Grand Finals and be like, Go Star Killer! <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. I mean, it'd be weird because you're paid to cost, but uh, you probably wouldn't get hired again. But that's probably true. You'd go out. You'd go out happy. Oh, though. Look at that beautiful Dal Alex 007 yeah. poster. And I'm like, I keep seeing this poster. It's so beautiful. Is it Gung Fu Banda? 
in that poster? Yes, I heard someone in the, uh, the like someone in the green room was saying that it might be Hellraiser. But speaking of the devil, looks like he is ready to go. We're starting to see that uh, the game is resumed. We have StarCraft underway, but everything looking normal. No shenanigans. All right, yeah, pretty standard stuff here from both players so far. Acropolis, of course, was the map where Hellraiser did do the cannon rush against Serral. And, but sort of like what I kind of expected from Hellraiser is he is just going to be a little bit careful in game one, played a little bit more standard, and then decide that you're like, okay, what do I think? What is in my repertoire that's going to be strong against you in game two, three, and onwards? Um, we're getting that uh, cyber core down here after the Nexus as well, so a bit more of a greedier opening, really just trying to take that early game edge away from a laser. Yeah, I do want to know that in his series versus Serral, we saw that Hellraiser was opening up with a lot of those double Stargate openings, going for a ton of those Phoenix, really trying to control the map, so... Uh, I'm actually really, really antsy to see if he's going to try and go for something like that because that can be really nice, but we have seen, you know, if you make a bunch of these Phoenix, there are other problems or other vulnerabilities you could potentially have later on. So we see first step getting Corona boosted out. Yeah, and looking on that warp gate timing, whether or not there's going to be a Stargate here, and it looks like it possibly is going to be a Stargate from Hellraiser to start things off, which is really stock standard against Zerg. Yep. There's that Stargate right in the main base. So a laser, of course, is just going to be darting around the map with his Zerglings, and the Overlords are going to be the main way that he tries to get a scout out on that, whether it just be the Phoenix killing those. But I want to actually know, this is something that more and more Zerg players started to do for a while, but there are, I think, a few players that we've seen, especially uh, today and yesterday, that haven't been doing this, which is only sending a single Overlord to actually go scout. A lot of Zerg players love sending the two Overlords. A laser just leaving one out of the map, and I feel like it was an adjustment from that Stargate period where mm. every Protoss player, every game was opening Stargate. Everyone, everywhere in the history of games forever. Yes, yeah. it was all about Stargate and PvZ. It's just wonderful that there's been some changes, that the Robo is a little bit stronger. I mean, Zergs will probably argue that they don't want the Robo to be as strong as it is right now <laughs> on the Robo tech part. But, you know, it is. there are a lot of options in the game for Protoss. It was certainly all about the Stargate back in the day. Adept Shade just scouting in here, not going to commit to any drone damage or anything like that. It's going to rely on the Oracles to do that, probably in tandem with the Adepts later is it generally, you know, you have a, like a two adept follow up, but he actually went for Stalker next here, so it's really trying to make sure that the Overlord stays away from his main. Yeah, what's actually kind of funny is that after that Oracle finishes, if he uses the Stalker, he can actually push back that Overlord a good bit, and he starts up, as exactly what I was going to say, he's going to start up more Oracles over here, and that means that there's not going to be the normal Phoenix that just immediately pushes back the Overlords. You see one Spore Caller getting started over in the main base, but uh, Spore Caller in the third base is a little bit late. The Queens are going to hold down the line at the natural, but even just a few drones over here are potentially going to be vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, even just forcing these spore crawlers is a little bit Whoa. of damage here. Uh, the Evo Chamber chaser. has quite a bit more minerals and uh, quite a bit more hit points on it, but cute. yeah, you get, you, you get your money back and that's fine. So it doesn't lose the drone in the end. It loses a few minerals, not the biggest of deals. We do see the Robo follow up here from Hellraiser, so not going to be a massive commitment into Stargate, at least, you know, not just yet. Going to go into Robotech, and that usually means that we're going to be seeing something a little bit different coming up. And he is still mining gas, so it's not like a Marjorie or anything like that, which is something that has followed up this sort of opening. But um, it's looking still just so standard from Hellraiser. Yep, just going to continue darting around with those oracles. We see the lair getting started as well as a Roach Warren over here for a laser. Now, I want to say that this game has been pretty normal so far. And a laser is actually going to go up to a total of 61 plus drones. So this doesn't look like it's going to be one of those Roach Warrens where you say, okay, 55 or 56 workers, let's go, boys, and try and push across the map, deny a third node. A laser is thinking about longer term play. Yeah, which is which is cool, because normally if anyone was going to go up to like 50 drones and then just stop and make roaches and attack you, that it would be, it a, would laser. be a laser. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he hasn't droned up for now. He is making some lings. Just looks to be defensive for the time being. But with the lair finishing up and the Roach Warren finishing up at around the same time, I'm expecting Roach Speed. I'm expecting upgrades in an Evo Chamber, at least plus one. Um, actually, doesn't even have an Evo Chamber yet. It looks like it potentially doesn't. That's a nice pick off for a laser, by the way. Getting rid of that Oracle, one less unit to worry about on his side of the map. There are the roaches starting up, and like you were saying, it's really just going to be useful for, I guess, pushing back any of those early uh, attacks that a first player can throw at him. But kind of funny. How do you feel about this pylon placement? <laughs> How do I feel about the pylon placement? I feel like it's a little strange. I feel like it's a good thing that a laser's killing them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's going to help out with the mineral mining efficiency later on. Yes. But we we got this weird situation oh, here where Hellraiser's moving Link run by, Link run by in the natural expansion. We're starting to see them killing a bunch of these probes. Oracle is going to help out a little bit, but that is a lot of probe damage. Uh, it certainly is. Hellraiser's with a committed push here. He doesn't have a whole lot of firepower in it, unfortunately. No immortals here, just sentries and stalkers, and he's warping in a few more stalkers to handle the roaches. The force field's keeping a lot of the Zerg army at back, but he's not shaving into that roach count. A laser still wants to make this Nidus strat work. 
And Hellraiser still pushing that line. The force fuel energy starting to get a little bit low, losing those sentries on the front line as well. Oh, he only has one or two of those sentries available in that war prism. This army's gonna get pushed back. He doesn't pick up that last sentry either. So now a laser has pushed back this force far enough that he might feel comfortable throwing up that Nidus or yeah, over sees it. Yeah, Overseer will get picked off, so it's going to be a, a bit tougher if he loses the Nidus Swarm over here, and the Portal does jump on that. Probe adding some DPS. This is actually going to be really, really close. I don't know. Nah, it's, it's got nothing in it anyway. Yeah. So a laser kind of knew, hey, you know, this has been scouted. I'm going to just pull out of this strategy and try and attack somewhere else. The Nidus Worm is not loaded up still at the moment, and as the Immortal count gets higher and higher, it gets harder and harder for a laser to make this unit count work against him. He's only up 10 army supply, and the Protoss army compositionally is just so much better against this Road Ravager force. Oh, Cross the Battle actually blankets a couple of those Stalkers. Looks like another one of those Night nice Storms that does start on up and uh, finishes in the center of the map there. Yep, just rallying to attack that third base. Uh, isn't really pulling out too many units, though. He's actually just going back into drones, recovering all the losses from that earlier attack. He's going up to a total of uh, almost 70 at this point yeah. and getting up his Hydrogen. I think that's really great maturity here from a laser, like not just to attack and just decide to attack and never stop. He actually is going to just basically evacuate this attack, do trades wherever he can, of course. Um, barreling this Oracle would be pretty nice, but pretty hard to do. And he's getting his Evo Chambers back at home, so he's looking at upgrades. There's even a Forge for Hellraiser as well. He's going to look to get a plus one, and the game will just continue. Nice arm will be taken out in the center of the map, and those Hydras are now getting started, so maybe they can actually start pushing back those Oracles, find one or two of them as they're... Uh, moving around the map, but what exactly? Okay, so we see a Lurker Den coming down for a laser. I'm wondering what yep. is that next transition point here for Hellraiser? There it is, the Templar Archives is gonna be adding on, not just the Archons, but also eventually getting up to Storm for those Hydras. Uh, I think that Immortals still need to be made in tandem with the Archons. While Charge Lot Archon and stuff can be really nice against Lurker Hydra, you really want to have a good number of mortals just to make it as a movie as possible. You want to be able to just roll through those lurkers <laughs> yes. instead of having to basically split and surround and deal with them, you know, sort of inefficiently. And a laser, he was, when we were talking about a laser in the pregame, one of the things I wanted to bring up was just that he was the guy that was all about massing tier two units and killing Protoss. Now they would hit the tier three, but he would have so many hydras, so many lurkers that he would just take the trades and do that six splash damage and just take down the Protoss army. He was one of the best Lurker Zergs from back in the day. I do miss that. I still see a little bit of a glimpse of it. Uh, Jose it. Phoenix, yeah, spotting out that Lurker Den is so, so key because you're immediately going to be thinking, okay, I need to dump my Cordobus into some more of those Immortals. Nice pick off on the Nidus Worm. So I think there's not really going to be anything over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just loaded up. Trying to pull some units back in the main. Put the fear of Nidus into the Protoss, which is always worth doing, I think. Absolutely. I feel like it's just one of those things where normally a Protoss player will try and deal with Nidus from something defensively by just warping in stuff back at home. But if your warp in is ever on cooldown or you don't have an immortal popping out, suddenly you're worried. So sometimes Protoss players have to start leaving some units back at home in places where it's not going to be involved in the fight. It's just a nice way to put that kind of pressure on to take actually better main army fights later on. Now, the, there's still single robo production here for Hellraiser, so he doesn't have an intense amount of immortals. Ooh, just loses that Oracle, so no tags. Keep in mind that he needs detection to really deal with these lurkers, and he doesn't have a whole lot because he'd be primarily one making observer. immortals. He's just got one observer, that's it. And without the Oracle, he can't tag them either, so this is going to be a little bit hard. And he has that Overseer with his army as well. If the laser can pick off that observer, it's going to get really rough for Hellraiser. Yeah, I mean, the saving grace over here is that the Overseer oh, the is so low on hit points, but this surround is going to be so brutal. The forces come down on the north side, a lot of those hydras getting kind of clumped up yeah, over choked. on that wall. A little stuck here on the ramp, a little behind there. Not too many lurkers as well. They eat some really bad weather there from Hellraiser. The north side, a laser is starting to break on through. The lurkers are out of range of some of the infrastructure of the Protoss, but he certainly can collapse on those charge lots if they attack in. Hellraiser splitting up his army beautifully here, dealing with the Zerg on two fronts, starting to cut into the lurker count as well. Nice clean up from Hellraiser on the north side of this third. Good oh. stuff from the Protoss player. He's starting to lose out a few of those units, but the shield battery's gonna start healing up a few of these Immortals. He's the Immortal the south. does get taken out. And yeah, the army from the south does come north. Gonna be able to clean up a lot of this army here for a laser who does get forced back, but a laser wasn't just all leaning off of this. He's got more bases coming up behind this. He's got a stellar economy, so he does have the ability to remake that army. Yeah, really nice clean up there. I was getting worried for him, you know. Just That was a lot of lurkers. The immortal count was just being made out of one robo, so it wasn't that insane, you know, dozen plus immortal count. Oh, a laser sees oh. the prism, but he's only brought one Hydra here. He's army out of position, so he's going to get a charge lot warp in. I don't know if it'll be too, do, doing too he much didn't damage, see us. though. <laughs> we haven't been seen. Oh, wait, we have. Okay, okay we're out.
Well, Warprism can come back in another day, and we are now seeing a laser's vision, actually, as he's darting around, trying to deal with the Warprism harassment. Yeah, you can he's see. keeping an eye on the red dots there in the minimap. I love that. Every single time he kind of darts over the minimap, you can see him looking straight at that Warprism, but it looks like he wants to get aggressive once again, but he sees that army in the middle of the map, and he's looking for opportunities, ways to kind of run around it. He's actually going to be trying to come in with a bit of a, I guess, a counterattack at the same time that he's going to try and defend. That was actually a really sick moment for that eye tracker there to see the plan of, of a laser. So now we know what he wants to do right now. He's attacking into that third. Hellraiser, oh. nothing at home at the moment. He's warping in defensively. Still has that Oracle with a little bit of energy there. Taking a lot of damage to some of the static defense. And that's not that many charge lots, Fear Dragon. No, absolutely not. But he's going to be trying to take a better fight over at the main army, engaging at the third base of a laser. So we're starting to see some storms coming down. Most of the lurkers have been cleaned up, but those hydras are Ooh. tearing through the zealots. Storm does blanket those Hydras, doing quite a bit. Oh, these Lengs are actually a great addition here. The charge lock count is really, really low. The Lengs are getting on top of this army here for Hellraiser. The Hydras are safe at the back line, and they crush on through a laser, killing the third Nexus and holding back at home, getting himself gain number one. Well done by a laser. Hellraiser was doing a great job with a lot of small little things there, but a laser, that one kind of move, that one little moment in the eye tracker that we kind of saw where the plan came together of, okay, I see your army is over there, I have an opportunity, splits up his army, sends a good chunk of it, and forces Hellraiser into an all-in position there. And Hellraiser, could, he just didn't have enough of an army to make that work. I don't think there was ever a moment where Hellraiser was attacking a laser without being attacked by a laser at the same time on his side of the map. Like, even in the early game, when he went for that sentry attack, right? Uh, a laser had that ling run by that you were mentioning where he just sort of got into that. I missed it completely, so I'm glad you saw yeah. it. Just ran into the natural, and it just killed like six or seven probes. And Hellraiser's like, okay, now this really needs to work. I really need to do a lot of damage with this tickle, tickle beam army of sentries and a few stalkers that I have here, which unfortunately, you know, didn't really do a whole lot. Elaza managing to just basically trade better. I guess the one time he didn't trade very well was that attack at the third place with his initial wave of, lur of lurkers. Yeah. Where it just seemed like, you know, uh, Hellraiser really had a handle on that defensively. But whenever it went onto the Zerg side of the map, it was all Elaza. Yeah, I actually I feel like Hellraiser had, like you were saying, really, really good fights for the most part, but a laser constantly had the counterattacks, and it's in those counterattacks that it made it so that Hellraiser needed more than just like an even or an okay or slightly good fight. He needed a really good fight to make up for the damage he was taking, and he never really got the really good fight. Mm. Acropolis is one of those maps where, depending on which side of the fence you sit on, you could argue that it's a good map for Protoss or for Zerg. I personally yeah. think it's a pretty decent Zerg map. So I'm interested to see what the next map is here in this best of five and see what Hellraiser has planned. Is that the game where he's like, all right, that was my standard PvZ. I have something different planned for the next map here. Because I know the Hellraiser is a very intelligent player, definitely has game plans, and I doubt we're going to be seeing, you know, back-to-back -back standard games here from him, even though he can play that style very, very well. Yeah, as an avid cannon rusher, Maynard, I will tell you, there are some <laughs> other maps that are actually quite good for some of those shenanigans if he wants to go for it. But here we are. We're moving into game number two, as it's going to be King's Cove. And this is certainly a map with a few cannon rush spots, but we'll see if, what he's going to be doing against this guy. Down at the bottom right, it is our blue Zerg player. It's a laser. And the top left in the red, the Protoss player going for a gateway. I'm so sorry, Fear Dragon. <laughs> Maybe a okay. gateway expand there on the low ground. This is the Ukrainian Clash Protoss. It is Hellraiser. I would say he has a little bit of crowd support. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. And quite loud here. Indeed. Well, not. To, I'm actually, this isn't too massive of a surprise just because I think this is also usually, this is like a PvP, PvT cannon rush map. PvZ it does get a little bit tougher as you can see that natural expansion is a lot wider open. So with the gateway expand, it does mean Hellraiser can just go for the normal sort of style. And I would say behind Thunderbird, this is probably one of the best masters just taking your third base and then walling off one of those ramps for the most part and just defending mm. basically those three bases really, really easily. The big difference is, of course, you know, you have to wall in that sort of low ground ramp mm -hmm. into the natural, but once you do that, you do have that sort of wide open ramp at the third base. Yeah. It's Indy showing us here. So the third is a little bit more vulnerable than Thunderbird. Thunderbird is basically saying, yes, Protoss have a third Nexus. It's completely fine. <laughs> I'm happy with you having it. Okay. So, a laser, again, he's the other one that we do have to keep an eye out if he wants to get a bit aggressive because he wanted to go for some of that Nidus Worm play and he did. got shut down pretty hard by Hellraiser. Really have to commend him on that uh, Nidus Worm stuff. It caused Protoss players a lot of problems for a few months. Protoss players <laughs> really struggled with them. but Especially when that thing had an extra armor point. Goodness yeah. gracious. <laughs> I think especially for Terran players who are struggling with that one, but... Uh, 
definitely we're starting yeah. to see Protoss players getting the handle on it now. You actually can pull pro workers and tier one units and actually kill it now. Yeah, you wasn't, do, which you wasn't do two the case damage before. to it yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Double the damage, man. <laughs> so we're starting to see Probe just getting some basic scouting information. Uh, I love when Protoss players are just a little bit more adamant about scouting out and confirming the third base, but a dev can do exactly that. We're seeing Stargate behind us and another one of those Stalker follow-ups once again. Mm. So same, same build opening here from Hellraiser, like completely to the letter so far. And, you know, it, we, we're kind of like, we, we mentioned the last cast that a laser is the kind of guy that'll go to 50-ish drones, drop a Nidus Worm, mass roaches, and go for it. But the maturity to pull out of that strategy and still go for a plan B is like the difference between a great player and one of these really consistent pros like a laser that we see. Absolutely. Great scout for this Ling, by the way. Like, not even needing the Overlord, straight into the main base, the door wide Ooh. open. Apparently Hellraiser grew up in a tent. <laughs> Actually, really, really nice also to note well, as the Adept is already getting a drone kill, yeah, which is really, really nice. Uh, might be able to get a second one over here. It Ooh. does manage to get it before it goes down. That's actually worth it there. One Adept for two drones and also forcing a Spore and a Cancel. Oh, absolutely. I do want to note really quickly that a laser, when he had that Ling alive, you can see the outline in the Stargate of what unit is being made. So you can actually see it is an Oracle, uh, the little hover. You can actually see that. And thank you so much, Indy, for pointing that out. But yes, so... A laser knows that it is going to be an Oracle first, and that means that he knows the timing that he needs to spore cards. If it's a Phoenix first, you pull back your Overlords, you have maybe a little bit more time that drone can mine mm. before it turns into a spore. Yeah, certainly. And we did have the Phoenix last time, so this is starting to change up slightly more here for Hellraiser. The double Oracle opening, and I wonder what the follow-up is going to be. As we have this first Oracle rolling into that third base, Whoop. Lava is definitely a good target here. If you don't see any drones, of course, drones are Tier 1 <laughs> targets. Yeah, drone pops out in the wrong neighborhood, gets taken out pretty quickly. Queens will finally come forward. Ooh, that's a nice ambush from the main base. Oracle does get forced back. It's gotten some decent damage on it, still has most of its hit points intact. We'll join forces with the second Oracle, try and get some more damage done later. Yeah, so deflecting the Oracle for now does take a little bit more damage, so anytime you can do damage with the Oracle and get out of there, that's the dream scenario there for the Protoss. We have a third Oracle coming out now for Hellraiser. The Oracle count's starting to get a little high here, and also the robotics facility back at home as well. So pulling out of the Stargate strat, but I like the triple Oracle. That's a very big threat to the Zerg's mineral line. Yeah, I feel like this has become very, very popular in PvZ these days, where you get up to three Oracles and you start adding on more and more of these Adepts specifically, just because the Adepts, obviously they're nice for trying to help defend your third base against a, a large number of Lings that kind of come on in with a nice little wall. The Adepts can hold the line, but oh, Oracle! Mm, all right, well, not triple Oracle anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, it's really, really key to keep those Oracles alive, because once the Adepts join in, when they are put together, they can do massive amounts of damage. We do see a Twilight Council being added on. Yeah, so switch out into, uh, I mean, Charge or Resident Glaze would make a lot of sense here. He's starting to make Zealous, so I'm guessing Charge. The, he also replenished that third Oracle that he lost there, so he really wants this triple Oracle threat to just be around here. And with a laser going for plus one melee and a Baneling Nest, are you feeling a Hydra Den here after the lair finishes Spear Dragon? Or I mean, do you I think something a little bit more spicier? I can definitely see the Hydra Den. I, I really just want to wait and see exactly what a laser is going to do because there are some really, really big scary pushes that I've seen Zerg players do without really throwing down the Hydra Den. But yeah, I really do like it when they just add that on. It just adds in a little bit more sustained firepower. But speaking of sustained firepower, uh, these Oracles finding the energy is cancel a fourth. Yeah, they're a threat to the mineral line. Also, just a hatcheries that are on their own. As they take one down there at the front, it is a can it is a cancel at least, not a kill. The Oracle's tanking a bit more damage here from the Spore Crawler. The Hill Razor doing nice micro there, rotating the hurt ones to the back, letting the high hit point ones take the brunt of the damage. And with this plus one melee, so a, a laser's going for a bit of an old school unit un comp here, Ling, Bane, Hydra, and also Overlord speed. A laser was one of those players that really enjoyed the Overlord speed openers here, yeah. but getting it a little bit later is interesting. This actually kind of makes me think that that a laser might want to go for either Nidus or Overlord drops later. Ex that's exactly what I was thinking. The Overlord drops is something that we've seen more and more of these Zerg players start to capitalize on. And especially if you have things like a Baneling Nest, you can go for the Baneling drops. We've seen really, really successful Hydra drops also in the main base. But Hellraiser is getting into his big wave of gateway production. After those six or seven gateways finish up, that is when massive floods of Zealots start coming out. Uh, there are those two drop overlords mm -hmm. coming out as well. Yeah, it's looking like a pretty clear plan here for a laser. He wants to drop those plus two attack banelings in the mineral line, one-shotting those probes and doing six splash damage. It means that Hellraiser's going to have to either detect this strategy or really be on top of his minimap awareness. 
He's hitting economy is going to be hit really hard. A lovely scout here with that speed over here. There's no stopping that. There's no stopping that speed over here. You are going to get scouted. Just lie over and let it happen. Yeah, one of the big things there is scouting out that the Temple Archives he is, in fact, researching Psionic Storm. So this isn't just a Temple Archives for a bunch of Archons and immediately having that big mid game army. No, he knows that Hellraiser wants to buy a bit more time. And he knows that there might be a little window of opportunity here right before Storm finishes. Certainly. That's good. I mean, Storm is the most threatening thing here to a laser's army. It's so light, literally. It's a light uh, yes. unit tag. It's just Lings, Banelings, and Hydras. And the Overlords are getting cleaned up. But of course, the Dropper Lord for a laser is tucked in pretty deeply to the top right. Although it looks like he has to run through the Oracles to get to it. Oh, he just realized run. it and walked down to the south. Oh my god, that one Phoenix yeah, he's is trying to control in the perfect place, though. Yeah, the Baneling Drops are about to kick in. He doesn't have plus two just yet, so they're not as threatening as they would be with plus two done. But it certainly is something that Hellraiser needs to de deal with. If he lets it happen without realizing it, it's going to lose a lot of probes. Money revelation on the entire army over there for Elaser. No chance he's really going to be able to get aggressive without Hellraiser having some idea about it outside of these kind of Baneling Drops in the corners. But fourth base is being established. The fourth base is where things get more complicated for a Protoss player because you want to keep your army in a position to defend that ramp over there as well as that third base location where the army currently is and also the low ground. So it's very easy to get caught out of position on this map once you start trying to get up your fourth or fifth base. Oracle's heading towards a laser. He's got a nice overlord position here to be able to see those oracles coming on in. Hopefully he has enough anti-air. The hive starts here for a laser as the infestation pits finishes. So he's not going to swarm host or anything, at least not just yet. So that means that I think he's going to want to start heading into Vipers here and go for something a little bit scarier, potentially even Greater Spire later. The ultimate endgame anti-Protoss Spire. And there's that tag there in the main base. He sees the hive here and also would see the spire with the tag's vision radius. Yeah, with, oh, snipes off one of the Oracle. Ooh, the second one as well. Oh, wow, just escapes. Yeah, but seeing that hive is so massive, especially when you see it with the spire, because you immediately know, okay, timer starts up in Hellraiser's brain, but okay, well, here we go. Overlord coming forward That's with those banelings. Plus two is on those banelings. Uh, does he go for the fourth? Does he go for a juicier third mineral line? Looks like the third's the target, and the natural as well. Oh. No pro pull here from Hellraiser. Oh my god, he's going to lose so many probes. Oh, oh. mineral lines taking so much damage. 29 workers going down. Suddenly that timer for the Broodlords, no, 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 that's not relevant. It's the worker <laughs> count that's now a big problem. Oh, man, and Hellraiser doesn't exactly have a ton of bank either, so his income really hurts this push here. Lots of creep spread as well, and, and I think a laser needs to engage this at all. I think he can just pull back, but he is going to eat a storm there on those banelings. He does connect with some of those zealots. A laser showing real confidence here, moving off creep to just chase down Hellraiser's army. Yeah, I'm kind of oh. oh, okay, Bainless going to come into the, the High Templar! Oh, no. he gets two of them there. Nice big offs from a laser. Only a few remaining. No energy on them. A recall from a laser. Or rather from Hellraiser. I knew we would mess <laughs> up the names eventually. Oh. What a cleanup from a laser. He is looking so good in game two. Absolutely brutal. All these High Templars freshly warped and none of them have any storms available. These Archons are doing their absolute best to hold the line, but Maynard... These Banelings, they are not going to go without getting some good damage done. And I think a laser on the verge of taking a 2-0 lead in this best of five. Definitely looking like it. There it is, a laser getting gain number two. Really showing his mastery in this matchup. And actually playing a very macro-focused game that time, but just off the back of some really insanely effective Banelings drop. I mean, if the Banelings drops didn't do that much, maybe Hellraiser can recover and get a better army, but a laser... Not only did he have enough to harass and do incredible damage, he also had the perfect amount of units and the right comp to deal with what Hellraiser did as far as his attack goes. Yeah, I, I do have to compliment that Hellraiser was preparing himself for the Broodlord transition. He was getting up plus one air weapons. He was probably going to be thinking about that Fleet Beacon soon, getting up the Tempest. Uh, I know some pro players like the Carriers, but I feel like the Tempest in that situation maybe made sense. And... He was getting ready for all of that. And the fact that he pushed out over there was a direct result of him taking so much economic damage where he had to do something to try and equalize the losses he took. So you can see he is taking that loss a little bit harder. He's now sitting down 0-2 in a best of five. That means he has to win three games in a row against a player that already has won two games against him. Yeah, certainly a bit of a rough spot here for Hell Hellraiser. He's just already one life remaining left and he's just he hasn't he hasn't got a second life here in this group the round robin is done with knockout bracket done with we are we are in an elimination match here mm -hmm. yep here in the playoffs is an unforgiving area but Hellraiser we can see if the audience is going to be able to pull him through this 
We'll find out what game number three is. Uh, I, I really do feel like that was one of the maps that I wouldn't... I, I don't actually know who dis, uh, picked that map, but I could very well see that that was Hellraiser's map pick, and if that was the case, then we might be just be going to a Laser's next map pick. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. Mm. The gorgeous crowd here in the Ukraine. A lot of familiar faces as well. Very keen to see these video games. Almost as keen as I. Almost. 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 Man, the crowd has been actually so fantastic. We've been seeing everyone hanging out, even for the very first match of the day. It's just been totally packed. And yeah, we've got people all over from Europe and the world here. Good stuff. In the top left, currently on match point. Just one more win, and this guy will move on to the round of 24. This is the Polish Serg in the blue. It is a laser. And down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the red Protoss player. Give him some love. He is Hellraiser. Ooh, that timing did right. I, I thought I had it. Feels bad. I took my headphones <laughs> off to try and listen to the. <laughs> All right, yeah. we now got our gate is, forge. Here we go. This is the cannon time. It's this, cannon o'clock. This is my this is my home turn. Take so it away. Solar cast from Fear Dragon. <laughs> so there are some really really nice positions for the photon cannons, but whoa, okay, he's gonna go for the hidden pylon. This is an incredible. Incredible gambit here. Oh, a laser he sees it. A laser knows. Okay, well, this is obviously a bad start for Hellraiser. The drone's really pulled on start. top of that pylon. So what do you do from here? The big thing here is that Hellraiser, he needs that pylon not just to try, try and start up these cannons. He needs it for high ground vision. So he still has that other probe alive. He can still throw up another cannon and maybe another uh, pylon up here on the high ground but he needs to maintain that high ground vision and then start pushing his way forward because he is looking to add on proxy robo over here. He's looking to add on uh -oh. additional buildings. Already losing that first pylon. He's starting off the second pylon, but three drones is exactly how many you need to take out that cannon. Certainly, I mean, the cannon does finish on the low ground, so some drones are about to take damage. It kills the high hit point structure, the pylon here. And we got that one down the front. So Hellraiser maintains high ground, but uh, there's, there's, to what end? There's a Roach Warren coming here for a laser, and he's bought, bought himself so much time to get his defenses up. A Queen is on the way as well. Exactly. This is the one of the big things about these cannon rushes, is that this is all mapped out to try and hit the Zerg player so that they can't cut too many corners. But because of how much time, like you were saying, that a laser has bought himself, that time is going to allow him to cut a lot of those corners <laughs> and get further ahead. And he's going to have a good solid drone count without really having to worry about the drones really being in danger. Uh, laser, speaking of drones, is squeezing out a couple here as his Roach Warren finishes up. He is still taking this seriously. You know, he's he's been starting off very, very nicely here. He's got Queens out, which help out a lot with the, you know, with the rush here and dealing with those little probes, trying to get closer and closer to the infrastructure of the Zerg. The robotics facility is the spine of this push. If that gets ripped out, then the body will fall limp. And that robotics tech really needs to be dealt with here by a laser. Of course, the immortal and the warp prism is what a laser is going to stop from happening, or at least attempt to. Well, if you miss 2018 WCS Valencia and you don't know how this works, it's all about Immortals, shield batteries, and eventually getting up potentially a Warp Prism if you find an opportunity to for a little bit of extra micro potential. But these two lanes are going to be annoying. They're going to force 150 mineral investment back at home. That's one and a half less shield batteries on this side of the map and maybe even delaying an Immortal or so. Adept gets picked off that every one of these units counts, Maynard. And these vials are something that Hellraiser absolutely can't really deal with. He's got his he's got his shield batteries juicing up the damage structures here, and then Immortal, of course, will take some more hit points from that shield battery, but the cannons will just constantly be vialed here by a laser. That is certainly the plan. Only just two Ravages for the time being. Definitely doesn't want to lose any units. Likewise for Hellraiser, almost more important for Hellraiser to not lose at anything at all. Yeah, specifically those Ravagers and the Queens are going to be the big units that a laser wants to keep alive, because if you can build yourself up to six Ravagers, boom, those corrosive vials, as long as you can time them all out quick enough, you can actually start taking out those photon cannons, but these queens, they're going to have the chance cool. to use energy. Nice transfuses. The last second keeps all these queens alive, and he's also doing a good job keeping the Ravagers alive. Uh, whoops. Oh, <laughs> so there are two ways you can do these cannon rushes. You either go after drones or you go after the hatchery, and it looks like Hellraiser is going to go straight after that hatchery, trying to take a lead that way. We start to see him getting pushed back, and you do have limited area here to build these shield batteries, but he's got plenty of them with a lot of energy left over. Certainly does. The shield battery is really helping out Hellraiser's push here. The main hatchery on half hit points. Laser freeing up an awesome supply for those Ravages, and he has got a decent count. The Queen are running out of energy here, and that one on the outskirts nearly gets taken down by the Immortals of Hellraiser. Oh. Is this starting to work here? I, I think it's starting to make a lot of progress. We're 
seeing that Elazer really feel like he needs to make something happen. But now he's starting to lose some of the Ravagers. He's starting to lose some of the Queens. I would love to see these Immortals go after the Hatchery instead of just going after, you know, the mishmash of the drones and the Hatchery. But he is making so much progress right now that is going to tap out. Hellraiser takes his first game. It was scouted. And it seemed like a laser had done anything, everything correctly, but maybe just got a little bit overconfident there on that hold, and Hellraiser just making it happen there with just a few immortals and a few shield batteries and a dream. Being able to maintain that high ground position and be able to still get up the photon can and everything for Hellraiser, that was so key. That was so important for him to be able to make that kind of attack work. Those attacks are all about also just keeping the shield battery energy high making sure that you can keep those immortals alive and a laser while he wasn't really losing units he also wasn't really doing that much damage to the buildings or to the immortals so the shield batteries are all very high in energy so whenever a laser did finally start to push in there wasn't that much fear there for Hell hellraiser those immortals are tanky units yeah, and they got plenty of their hit points back as well. Of course, Hardened Shield, a pretty good ability for those Immortals. And everything that, that everything that a laser had, Queens, Structures, Roaches, Ravages, all fall pretty quickly to Immortals. So, yeah, got the job done there. Well, a laser was sitting there holding his head a few seconds ago. <laughs> that kid just, he's just punching him. Oh, my God, that poor guy. No. Uh, we saw a laser holding his head, so I hope he's not going to be too distraught after this. I know he's probably getting some flashbacks to some of the matches he's lost versus Haas in the past as mm. he's been one of the uh, the fatal victims to that man but he was one of the several play pro, uh, he was one of the several players at Valencia that was like oh Haas right easy yeah. and then thought that they had that one in the bag and then Haas proceeded to cheese them out of the game you know what you know what is so funny to me though Maynard is that that is one of the maps that I think is very good for a lot of those cannon rushes versus Zerg but that's not the p location <laughs> that makes it a good uh, <laughs> map so I really wonder is he willing to bust it out again? Oh, okay, this this is an almost impossible map to pull off that Cannon Rush versus Zerg. You have to just, I honestly have to just say that you have to get a little, you have to get straight up lucky versus Zerg a lot of the time. On the bottom left here, it is the Zerg we're talking about still on match point in the blue. The Polish Zerg, this is a laser. And up here in the top right-hand corner of the map, the red Protoss player was able to take his first game. Can he take another two? He is Hellraiser. Well-timed. You did it. We finally got there. We got there. Four games in. It's a gateway expand here for Hellraiser. I'm going to have a look-see with the probe. And Turbo Cruise is one of those maps we really haven't seen a whole lot of in this tournament. Getting vetoed quite a bit. And the Forge. Okay, Forge next here from Hellraiser. So th this is what I call the in control cannon rush ah. because it's the gate forge. So right the funny on the thing Overlord, is. Though. Yeah, so the funny thing is you don't know as a laser whether or not this is truly a cannon rush. But you, once you see the second pile, you're like, okay, maybe. Once you see the third one, you're like, oh, all right, all right, gotta handle this. Yeah. Um, well, uh, a laser might actually just give up the natural and expand elsewhere, because the probe is sort of stuck in at the moment, and with that free pylon wall, the drones are not going to drill through it. He's just doing a bit of chip damage here with these drones, but there is no way in there. And is Hellraiser going to leave the door open? He is happy to get the cancel there on the hatchery as a laser goes for the third base location instead, takes his second gas, and with the spawning pool finishing up, I'm expecting a Roach Warren follow-up. Yeah, this is a far less committed style of the cannon rush because you do go for that gateway before the forge. You're really looking to transition out and start getting up the rest of your tech path. But we still don't see that uh, Nexus coming up for Hellraiser. We can start to see some of those minerals uh, building up up to almost 300. Once that Cybernax Core finishes, that is around the time that we'll see whether or not he really wants to commit a whole lot more. Yeah, just finding the gas that he needs here to make the roaches work. It's halfway done here, the roach warren. It's pretty scary. One base tech for the Zerg. Well, actually, he has a second base finishing up there at the third base location. And he sees the Protoss is just happy with the start, getting that Nexus on location. Cybercore is up, and the Stargate is going to be the follow-up here for Hellraiser. So, I mean, it's a great little bit of damage. You slow down the economy of the Zerg quite a bit. And normally, a Zerg wants to get a third hatchery around now, and he's just barely got two. Yeah, I mean, it's even some of the small things, right? Because a laser has to transfer. Normally, you're transferring a bunch of your workers over to your natural, or you're slowly starting to saturate that. You have to wait until you kill off that photon can. So you can use the queen for the high ground and start chipping away at it. Some roaches are going to be coming out, though. Those are units that a laser doesn't want to make right now. It's all these small little things that do add up. Indeed, indeed. Hatchery finishes up here for a laser. 
And it's just a little bit tougher to defend that hatchery until the creep spread gets out there. But of course, make the most important thing is that the hatchery exists, so that he has that extra supply from it, and that it's getting mined from as well. This cannon rush, this pylon little area here, is being cleaned up by the roaches of a laser. And one of the most one of the most important things here for the Protoss is to be ready for the fact that the roaches can come across the map and can try and counter damage you. But it doesn't look like a laser's got that plan in mind. He's only made a few roaches to make sure he's safe. If there are any more cannons, or you know maybe he tries to rush the, rush the third hatchery or something like that or the third base, natural hatchery, whatever you want to call it. And it is just going to be a Stargate follow-up. Hellraiser actually making the right call here. Yeah. I'm also glad that Hellraiser started up Warp Gate. <laughs> it start, took a little while to get that started up, yeah. but it was focusing on getting up the Oracle and, of course, uh, some of those early, other early units. But Phoenix on the way following this up. We're going to start to see that. Remember that the second hatchery did, did finish up so much later that the Queen Count's going to be a good bit lower. So he really needs to rely on that Sport Crawler to help push back the Oracle. I think we're going to see some proxy tech here, Fear Dragon. That looks like a Twilight Council pylon to me. I don't know about you. Probe's still there, so he definitely wants to build something. Oh, a Robo. Robo. Okay. Both pretty frightening here and very, very hard for a laser to scout. He gets through the main base. Yeah, he gets a look at the pylon count here as well, but uh, does anything really spike into his, you know, does, is there red alert here for the Zerg based on what he sees? Well, the Oracle's going to be able to push back these roaches, which are just picking away at the uh, Seven S Corps, but he really hasn't seen anything. And sometimes not seeing anything is actually exactly enough to, to know that something sh uh, shenanigan-wise is going to be happening. But So tough to know. A laser, I mean, yeah, he's, for example, that... Extra proxies uh, could have also been like a second Stargate or something. That could have been so many things. Could have been the Twilight Council you were talking about. So how do you prepare for something like that? Well, I mean, a laser is setting out those roaches to the corners of the map, kind of, to see what's up. So maybe he feels like this doesn't seem correct based on what he's seen. So good stuff from a laser. I mean, that certainly is the case. But we are seeing a big all in here from Hellraiser. Many gateways being morphed at that pylon, at the proxy where the robo is. Is this going to be a ton of adepts and immortals, I guess? Yeah, third gas was taken there after a laser got that Overlord Scout in, but he just still has not seen almost anything. All the gateways are getting added on, but it's inside the main base, and there's no longer any vision over there. Immortal's getting rallied out. That attack is going to be hitting very soon. Oh, is the Stalker helping the Cyrenex Corps? Yeah, it is. Taking out? Let me help you, mate. We're all friends here. He's like, I kind of want to get out. I feel <laughs> like that, that, that's got to be a mistake. Uh, second no, side of NX Core, just in case yeah, he here. He doesn't actually need, uh, He is going to knock it down and get out for sure. But it's getting, he's actually getting a mixture of gateway units here. He's got a Stalker back at home. He's making Zealots. He's getting a, a Sentry as well down in this, this proxy gateway location. Elise is getting plenty of Roaches up. He's stopped droning for now. And he's going to need to just mass Roaches for a while here to be able to hold this. This from Hellraiser looks very scary. Absolutely. A lot of Sentries getting added into the mix as well. We're starting to see that the... Oracles. Ooh, that creep spread for our laser actually helps him quite a bit here. Getting into position is a huge aspect of this, and just getting the roaches over there and... Whoa, actually, uh, I was saying getting into evacuate. position, but he's finally getting the queens over here, but the army's already on top of this third. Certainly is. It's right here on the third base. There's immortals are in this army as well. It's not just the sentries on their own. A stasis catching some of those drones as well. They got pulled to try and get into the action here. There's roaches and ravages from a laser. A decent army supply here for the Zerg as well. If he can get on top of that prism, this shuts it oh. way down. Hellraiser pulling back, trying to keep that prism alive. He loses the immortal. He loses oh. one of the immortals. That's critical. Oh, GG. Man. That looks so strong from Hellraiser, but a laser just seemed to have the reads. He made units at the right time and just pushed it back easy peasy. That warp in round getting cancelled was massive because if those zealots come out, suddenly there's a frontline buffer. The queens can't just get in close enough to do that. The warp prism can then, Mike is not busy trying to move around, go out of warp in mode. It can pick up the immortal, so that survives. Everything looks different if those vials don't force that warp prism to cancel. Yeah, that warp in would have been absolutely dead. Completely agree with you there, man. Wow, that was a, a bit of an action-packed series. Certainly some aggression from both sides of the of the map there, but in the end, a laser still stands. And young Bob Dan Hellraiser will have to try again next season. The poor guy has been defeated, and a laser.